Okay, so let's continue. So we're talking about uh, virtual memory, or actually virtualization of memory. So uh, we're talking, uh, we finished the topic of address translation. So, and I think we started last time with uh, segmentation, right? But before we continue with segmentation, uh, I don't know if you're reading the book. How many of you are, read, are reading the book? Lava. Para lang nagbabasa ng nobela dito. So, so it's very easy to understand. Or siguro dahil alam ko na yung ibang topics dito, kaya madali na lang para sa akin. But, uh, <coughs> it's good if you read this book kasi uh, you get the, a lot of details. Right? So, yung slides kasi medyo limited siya. So, uh, it's better to have it to have this. Uh, so, I'd like to go over sa book. Uh, no, no. I'd like to go over this step. Okay? Kasi ito yung discussion ng ano, ng base and bounds and how the operating system, the hardware, and the process co operate uh, when you have uh, address translation. Okay? And the lab last Tuesday actually introduced you to the details on how the x86 actually implements the mechanisms that I am discussing here. For example, the return from trap instruction, what is the equivalent x86 code? It's IREP, right? IREP. Okay. So, uh, in the lab, uh, in, this, in, this, in this illustration, it shows here you have to initialize the trap table. When initializing the trap table, that means initialize, initializing the interrupt vector table. Remember that you have in, uh, 256 interrupt, possible interrupts, right? So this is what you do that, uh, how you do that. So you, it's the operating system kernel. You have the LIDT instruction to populate the interrupt or the trap table, right? So remember, you have to specify the, you did not do this. There was no system call handler yet in the lab. But there was a timer handler, right? It is attached to IRQ0, right? Then you have to modify to specify a callback function whenever the timer ticks, right? That's the idea. Then you start the timer, and then uh, after a while, the timer will uh, expire, and then uh, you will have to initialize the process table. The process table is uh, the list of processes that are running the system, and then you have to initialize the free list. Right? Now, this is what happens. Actually, if you, if you continue with the tutorial that uh, you did in the lab up to the user mode, right? this is actually what's going to happen. So when you, in the user mode, you have to load a process, and the process will be coming from the disk. Right? So the kernel, the OS kernel, will have to allocate an entry in the process table. So you have a data structure here, uh, the process table, the list of process running. So what the operating system kernel does is create an entry. Uh, the process table can be an array of processes or it can be a linked list. Usually it's a linked list of processes. Okay. And then you allocate an entry in that. And then you allocate memory for the process. So allocating memory for the process, that would mean allocating the virtual address space for the process. Right? And then you have to set the base and bound registers. Right? We're not just talking about segmentation here. We're talking about uh, base and bound registers. So you have to set that. And then uh, the operating system will return from trap right? and then move the context to the, supposedly to the program. But in order to do that, it has to go to the hardware first, right? So the hardware will have to restore the context switching, right? We call the context switching. So what will happen is the hardware will restore at the register of A, uh, move to the user mode, right? And then jump to A's initial program uh, counter, the first line of code. And then uh, when the program, let's say, fetches an instruction, right? That instruction, or the location of that instruction is in virtual address space. Okay? So the hardware via the memory management unit will have to translate that 
virtual address to a physical address. So there, that's why we have a translation a step here. And then it will do the actual perform, uh, the fetching, the actual fetching from the physical memory. And then once the instruction is fetched, then the process A runs. Okay. So notice that during the translation from the pro program, it's only the program and the hardware that are uh, communicating. The OS is outside of that. Right? It's limited direct execution. Okay? Then if you have, uh, for example, if the instruction is a load instruction or a store instruction, it's fetching or storing data from or to the memory, then it also, the, the hardware should also perform the translation again. Okay? And then the checking whether uh, the memory address being accessed is within the bounds. Right? And then the translation is happen, is hap will happen, and then the actual load store will happen, and then continue running. And then when the timer interrupts, right, the control is returned back to the operating system, and then the operating system, the scheduler, will check. Should I stop process A or and run process B? Then if I want to do that, then I will need to do some context switching and we discussed this already last time. You get the idea? So uh, it's it is important actually, it is important that you know, that you understand the, this uh, timeline because it describes actually the interaction between the, the operating system kernel, the hardware, and the uh, user processes, okay? So I hope, uh, you study this uh, uh, in your in your free time, right, during your free time. Okay, so we move, we continue with uh, fragmentation uh, with uh, segmentation. Right. Now, the essence of segmentation is that. Uh, do you remove this? Okay, so the idea of segmentation is that. Ano alis nito? Alam niyo ba kung paano alis nito? Dik lang siguro. Okay. Blag out na lang ako. Bakit gano'n? Noob ako ah. Asan? Talaga? Dito? Ah, oh, ano? Uh, thank you for that information. Okay. So going back to the topic segmentation, the original idea of the base and bounds is that the process is every compo every uh, logical component of the process belong to a single contiguous uh, memory space. And you have to specify the base and the bounds, right? That's the idea. Now, the problem with that is you have this unused space, right? So the concept of segmentation is basically, why don't we allocate uh, spaces for each of the logical segment, even though they are not contiguous in the physical memory? Because in the original, uh, in since, uh, since the process is contiguous in the virtual memory address space, they should also be contiguous in the physical memory. 
So the solution is basically to have different uh, base and bounds for each logical code segment. You did this in the lab, right? When you configure the uh, global descriptor table, you set set gate. Right? You have to specify the kernel code segment. You have to specify the uh, kernel data segment, the user code segment, and the uh, user data segment. You have to specify the base and limit right, in the x86. So this is the idea. So the concept is uh, that uh, when the even though in the logical address space the the components are in a contiguous are, are located in a contiguous memory area in the actual physical memory they can be uh, separated like right. this right. and uh, the translation will happen in the same manner right. so just uh, align the, the uh, virtual address space with the physical address space and you will see here the translation so you have uh, 100, 100, so if uh, the code segment starts at 32 KB and in the virtual address space is 100, so in the actual physical address space, that will be 32868 because that's, uh, I think, uh, I forgot the value for 3K, 32 KB, right? But this, you get the idea, right? Now, in the case... So you can... Yes? So you can offset uh, hindi, depende yan. Ito ay kahit saan dito sa code segment. So, pwede, pwede asing marami yan eh. So, you can have, let's say, up to two, any address, uh, it, it can be uh, it can be in a different location. It's not it's not uh, fixed at 100. Depending on the uh, memory address that you're accessing. And, of course, this is also, this may also be different because the operating system may place the process anywhere actually in the physical memory, depending on its algorithm. Now, let's talk about, uh, let's look at the heap. Okay. So the heap, uh, you have to, you have to consider this program. This is the, this is a, this, this example process. So in the virtual address space, it is continuous, right? But if we have, if we have segmentation, each component here may be placed uh, anywhere in the physical memory. Right? So let's look at the heap. So the heap is at 4 KB in the virtual address space. So as you see here, in the virtual address space, it's 4 KB. But in the physical memory, when the operating system, uh, in the operating system uh, allocated that to the physical memory, it is right after the, right after the code segment. If the size of the code segment is 2K, so 32, KB plus 2K, that will be 34 KB. Do you agree? Okay. So right above it is the code segment, and then below is the below the code segment is the heap. And since the size of the code segment is 2 KB, so 32 plus 2, this is 34 KB. Okay. And you see here that. Uh, in order to access the actual data in the physical memory, it is not a direct translation similar to the code segment. Why? Because uh, the code segment starts at offset 0, right? whereas the heap started at offset 4 KB. So if the data is located at address uh, 4200, you have to subtract that. Uh, you have to subtract 4200 from the start of that uh, uh, the address in the virtual memory to get 104, 104 and then 104 will be added to the physical address in the physical memory. You get the idea? Okay, so that's how it's done. And of course, uh, the heap also grows uh, uh, downwards, increasing memory area. Okay. Now this is now, uh, of course you're, you've been hearing the, you've been seeing the error segmentation fault, right? But can you explain why uh, usually it comes at 121 or 123? The main explanation is you're accessing a pointer that is not no longer existing, right? But in the context of operating system, there's actually an illegal access violation. Right? 
because the operating system will allocate the memory address space for the process. And within that address space, if your program tries to access memory outside that uh, address space, then you'll get a segmentation fault. Right? So if an illegal address has a 7 KB, which is beyond the end of the heap, right? here, right? the OS occurs and the segmentation fault happens. Right? And the hardware detects that address is out of bounds. So uh, I hope you can explain that now to your younger uh, course mates. Uh, not just explain, ah, you're, po you're pointing somewhere and not, uh, not, uh, that is not existing or something outside the scope, but you can draw a diagram. Uh, this is the address space of the program you're running. Whenever you call malloc and then you ask a point, you can draw okay, the address space of the process. Okay, now how do you refer to a segment? Okay. So, how do you specify a segment? Okay. You are just given an address. Okay. Example here, 4,200. 4,200 is the address in the virtual address space whereas 34920 is the address in the physical memory I, ho I hope you can understand that now okay? so this is in the virtual memory this is in the actual physical memory okay? now if you are given just the address 4200 how do you determine whether this 4200 is in the code segment, in the heap, or in the stack? Okay. So that is the question that is being answered in this slide. So the first one is the explicit approach. The idea is to chop up the address space into segments based on the top few bits of the virtual address. So let's say 4,200. 4,200 is the virtual, virtual address in the which is actually in the heap. How does the operating system determine, or the hardware determines whether it is in the heap? Okay. So you allocate, if you have a 14 byte, uh, 14 bit uh, virtual address format, okay, you can use the top two bits to specify the type of segment. Okay. So remember, if you recall in, in the lab, when you specify the the gates, the global descriptor table entries, you have to specify the type of the code segment, right? Is it code, is it data? Right? So it is in a similar manner that this uh, one is, uh, what is showing is, is what is shown in this one, right? So if this is the address on the heap, okay, and if you convert this to binary, this will be the uh, contents of this, this will be the uh, binary version of the address. And then if the value is 0, 1, then this is located in the heap, right? right? So basically, you just provide some mapping. So if you're taking coxine 1, 3, 2, right? so okay, may mapping lang yan. It's code, pag 0, 0 yan, that is, that belong, this is an offset to the code segment. If 0, 1 is an offset to the uh, if one zero this is an offset to the uh, to the stack. Now you have one unused uh, combination, okay? So normally, uh, so parang sayang yan. If you if this one will not be you sayang nung yung dalawang business and malilimit ngayon yung offset mo, okay? So that's the problem. Now in some systems, instead of having two bits, if you only have three. Three, uh, three types of segments, isang bit lang yung ginagamit. Yung heap saka yung code pinagsasama. Kasi usually, ganito naman, uh, ganito naman yun eh. Kasunod naman lagi yung code saka yung heap. Okay? So that's the explicit approach. Basically, you just specify as part of the virtual address, you designate which, bit, which bits in the address, virtual address is dedicated to specify the segment. The segment. Okay? And given that, uh, given that example, okay, uh, given that scenario, given this explicit mechanism, we can have this code to be able to access the actual memory if you are uh, 
implementing segmentation. Okay? So this is the virtual address, let's say 4200, 4200. So you simply end that with the uh, segment mask. Okay? The segment mask would be this one. Okay? Basically, ito yung, yung top 2, wawan mo lang. Makukuha mo yun, yung top 2 bits, so masi-zero mo lahat nung nandun sa dulo. Tapos, isi-shift mo to the right, 12 bits. Okay? Nakakukuha niyo ba yung code na to? Shift mo to the right, 12 bits, para makuha mo yung uh, actual segment value. Okay? Now, kung halimbawa, yung bound sa kayong base, di ba kasi, you can actually represent... Uh, you can actually represent this as an array. Index, ito yung index niya, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0. Ito yung base, ito yung size, so bounds. Okay? So you can actually do that, and this is what will happen. So you can get the offset by just uh, getting the virtual address and then uh, getting the offset mask. Makukuha mo yung offset na yun. And then you can check now whether the offset is within the segment. So yung segment, ito yung 0, 0, 0, 1, or 1, 0. And then, uh, you can check whether it is within the bound. So, pag nangyari yan, seg fault. You issue a seg fault. Okay? And then, else, you simply get the physical address. Okay? Basically, you get base segment plus the offset and then, you store that to the register and you get the value. You get the idea? So, this is how the hardware checks whether the uh, memory you are accessing is uh, uh, will cause a uh, segmentation fault and this one is that part here okay so so it's um, a combination of uh, bitwise operations and shift operations to be able to extract the values okay now let's look at the stack okay now the stack is quite uh, different why? Because it grows downwards. Unlike the heap, if you allocate more, me if you need more memory, the space is allocated here. Okay? Whereas the stack, okay, uh, the stack grows downwards. Although the arrow is pointing upward it means it grows downwards in mem in terms of memory addresses okay so if the stack grows backward or downward uh, extra hardware support is needed to be able to perform the computation so originally this or these are the only uh, information needed to support segmentation now since we have the stack which behaves differently we need to add another uh, hardware support to determine the direction of growth of the uh, of uh, the segment. Okay, so one one it means grows downward. Pag one, pag zero naman it uh, grows uh, upward. Where pag zero naman it grows downward. Okay, so you just add an, the hardware the hardware designer. So alibawa, uh, you are asked to design a processor okay, that supports segmentation in, in the memory design. So you need to add additional bits to represent uh, uh, if uh, growing upward, downward or uh, downward. Okay? So, yun lang. And the calculation will basically be ano lang, a subtraction. The typical arithmetic uh, operations and then, check mo lang kung ano yung value para makakuha mo yung address. Wala siya example dito, pero sa book there's an example on how uh, the address is computed. Okay. The next one is okay. The next one is support for sharing. Now they realize that uh, if you have segmentation, you can actually share segments. Code uh, share segments. Okay. Why is that? Uh, that is useful if you have a multi-user operating system. For example, lahat kayo nag-connect sa machine na to via SSH tapos in-open nyo yung Vim okay? the text editor okay? instead na bawat user magkikreate ng uh, code segment para sa Vim okay? for each user 
Ang pwede mangyari, you can just have one code segment for Vim. Pare-pareho lang naman yon, And then, isi-share na lang yun ng lahat ng users. You get the idea? So, that's the, that's the uh, message of this support for sharing. Okay? The segment can be shared between address space. And code, uh, it's still used today, especially if you have the C runtime library. Okay? So, limbawa yung mga printf na ganyan. Pag niload mo yung Linux, yung, print, yung code ng printf, nasa memory na yan. Okay? Kaya kung mayroon kayong program na gumagamit ng printf, ginagamit niya yung nandun na sa memory ng printf. Hindi niya siya mag allocate pa ng separate memory area na magkocontain na yung printf na na-link dun sa system mo, sa, sa program mo. Okay? So, this is done by using extra hardware support. Uh, you did this in the lab. Okay? Wherein you have to specify protection bits in the access flag byte okay? in the GDT entry. Okay? So, nandun yung protection bits. Okay? So, you can specify sa certain permissions like, like uh, read execute for the code segment, read write for the heap, and read write for the, for the stack. Okay? So, most of the time, yung code is actually shared. The code segment is shared. As I mentioned about yung printf, okay? printf gamit na gamit yan, ilagay mo na yan sa memory, lahat ng processes na gustong gumamit ng printf, i-access tong printf na to. That's the idea of code sharing. Okay? So, yeah. uh, you'll get to see that later in, in the lab. Okay. And there's also uh, a granularity of uh, segment, uh, segmentation. So, the first one is called uh, coarse grain, means uh, segmentation in a small number. So, you basically just have the code, uh, the code segment, the heap segment, and the stock segment. Okay. Or, it can be fine grain. Segmentation allows more flexibility for other space in some early system. Okay. So, at the, uh, the x86, this is where x86 comes in. Remember, fine grained yung ano, fine grained yung segmentation ng x86. Kasi kailangan mo mag set up ng GDT, Global Descriptor Table. So you can actually, ang dun sa lab, meron lang lima na entry dun sa descriptor, di ba? Yung null descriptor, dalawa para sa code, uh, dalawa para sa kernel, tapos dalawa para sa user. Okay, dalawang, ent uh, limang entries lang. But you can actually add more if you want to use more. Okay. So that's called fine grained x86 fine grain yung uh, support niya for segmentation. So yung previous discussion is focused more on the hardware support. Ano yung mga kailangan ng implement ng hardware or i-provide ng hardware para magkaroon ng segmentation. Now how about uh, uh, OS support? Okay. So one of the issues uh, in segmentation is yung tinatawag na external fragmentation. Meaning, little holes of free space in physical memory that make difficult, make it difficult to allocate new segments. If you have a fine-grained, uh, or if, if you have this memory set up here, okay, and divided siya into, alam ito, field na rin to, okay, if you need a large chunk of memory, since hindi contiguous yung, ano, yung uh, available memory, kung meron kang segmentation, hindi mo ma-accommodate yung request na yun. Okay? So that is external fragmentation. Okay? And that is the, one of the problem with uh, uh, segmentation. And the operating system should be able to support, to be able to somehow uh, resolve uh, external fragmentation. So, as an example here, if a process will require, let's say a new process comes in, a, a new program is loaded, and then that program needs 24 kilobyte of memory for a segment, pero hindi contiguous yun. Okay? So, hindi mo ma-allocate yun. Okay? So, one solution is called compaction. So, ibig sabihin ng compaction, flatten mo lang siya. Okay? So, ito, siksikin mo lang, i-push mo lahat yan dun sa may right after the operating system para ito, malaki-laki yung chunk na available na pwede nang i-allocate. Okay? So, that's the idea of compaction. Okay? However, the compaction is 
expensive. So you can't do compaction every every time. Kasi anong gagawin mo doon? Kailangan kung i-compact mo yung ano yung uh, memory, you need to stop the running process kasi habang nagra-run siya, hindi mo naman pwedeng ilipat na lang bigla yung code segment niya sa taas na malapit sa OS. Right? So you have to stop the process. Then you have to copy Okay? from one memory location to another. And then, you also have to update the uh, base register or the segment register. Okay? Here. The, the, yung base register sa segmentation, ang tawag na natin ay segment register. Okay? So, that's compaction. So, uh, ito pala. You have the, you have the uh, illustration here. Okay? So, not compacted and then you compact that and you have now a contiguous chunk of memory to support or to provide to uh, a request which requires a uh, bigger memory. Okay? Are there questions about segmentation? So, uh, what the main takeaway for this topic is that uh, segmentations allows you to separate uh, the different logical components of a program that, so that they, they, they need not be contiguous in the physical memory. So, ang, ang, ang recurring theme dito is hindi pinapahirapan ng operating system sa kanang hardware yung programmer kung saan niya ilalagay yung code sa kayong data niya. Basta, programmer, ang isipin mo lang, pag-aari mo yung memory na yan, you can put anywhere in that virtual address space. Ako nang bahala kung saan ko talaga ilalagay yan sa physical memory. Basta isipin mo lang, meron kang, kung 32-bit yung address address mo, so 0 to 2 to the 32, yun yung address range mo. Galawin mo, anong gusto mong galawin sa area na yan, wala akong pakialam. Uh, basta yung operating system, behind the scenes, siya yung may ginagawa para i-manage yung memory na yan. Okay? So that's the main takeaway for that. And kaya mahirap, masakit sa ulo pag gagawa ka ng operating system. Imagine niyo kung nag kung nag-start pa lang kayo ng programming sa COMSA 21, kailangan yung uh, i-determine kung saan ilalagay sa physical memory yung ano yung uh, ninyo, yung data niyo sa kayong code niyo, di ba? So na wala na yon dahil sa virtualization ng memory and because of the operating system. Okay? So one uh, one of the task of course is managing memory nga, virtualizing memory. That's one of the task of an operating system. Right? Now, the next topic is called the uh, free space management. Okay? So sabi natin when a process request uh, when a process is executed, pinakita natin kanina, maglo-load ka sa memory, magki-create ka ng entry sa process table and then you have to allocate the address space for the process that will contain the code, the heap, the data, and the stack. Okay? So the operating system should somehow develop or implement mechanisms to do that efficiently and with control. Okay? And we call that free space management. And in the textbook, the main, the main uh, idea is, the main example is malloc. Okay? So everyone here, of course, have used malloc in their program, and that will be the uh, context here. Okay? So, uh, I'd like also to emphasize na iba yung pag, yung pag allocate ng memory ng user programs yung ginagawa nyo, kumpara na sa pag allocate ng memory sa kernel. Okay? So, magkaiba sila. So, the main, uh, there are two main concepts with, with regards to free space management. Okay? Kasi pag nag-boot yung operating system mo, yung kernel, meron siyang access dun sa entire physical memory. Okay? Pwede niyang i-treat yun. Kung wala pang lamang process dun, sa kanya lahat yun. Paano niya i-manage yun? Okay? Now, there are two main concepts. Your first is called uh, splitting. Okay? So, when, uh, when a process requests Okay, for a memory, let's say mal from the heap, the same a malloc, okay. Kailangan yung maghanap ng free space kung ilal sa nila lagay yon, okay. And yung splitting, uh, finding a free chunk of memory that can satisfy the request and splitting it into two, okay. In this example, 
if you have so dito uh, we have a 30 30 byte heap so gamit na may naka-allocate na yung 10 to 20 yung 20 to uh, 10 to 20 yung 21 to 30 hindi pa as yung 0 to 9 hindi pa okay. so this is the the status of the heap okay. and then you as i mentioned a while ago uh, in the quiz uh, you have a free list that maintains the list of available uh, of free memory area okay. now if the request is bigger okay halimbawa nag-request ako na bigyan mo nga ako ng ano ng 40 okay kung ito yung heap mo 40 walang pwedeng mag-satisfy sa request na yon right kasi lahat yung length niya ay 10 okay so the solution is wala out of memory tayo magre-return ng null yung malloc di ba tine-check niyo ba yon if you have if you allocate if you use malloc if pointer equals calls null we should hindi na allocate yon kasi ganito yung scenario niya but if you in this scenario if this if, in this if the state of the heap is like this and the free space like this and then you requested for a smaller okay for a smaller number of bytes okay you can actually uh, split Limbawa, 5 lang yung na-request mo. Pwede kang kumuha ng isa dyan, tapos i-split mo siya. Okay? Tapos, ma-update yung request mo. So, in this example, ang na-request niya ay 1 byte. Okay? So, 1 byte, merong dalawa kang pwede pagkuhanan yan. Ito, saka ito. Okay? So, usually, since ang unang... Uh, Kung sa dulo ka titingin, yung, yung dulo yung i-allocate mo, okay? So, ang mangyayari, yung sa dulo, babawasan mo ng isa, so, yung length niya ay 9 na lang, original 10, kasi 1 byte yung request mo, and then, yung address niya, will, yung starting address ng free memory na yun, will na be uh, at this point, 21. Kasi ito, used na to. You get the idea? So, you split Kasi kaya naman, may malaking chunk ka, may request ka na mas maliit, you split the bigger chunk. And you have to update the status of the free list accordingly. Okay? Now, the opposite of splitting is coalescing. Meaning, you try to uh, merge uh, freed blocks. Okay? Kasi ang mangyayari, kung nirelease, kung ngayon, like, di ba ang opposite ng malok ay free? So, what's the main, uh, kung titignan niyo yung function prototype ng malloc, okay. so, you see here, the malloc, kailangan mo specify ng uh, size. Pero yung free, may size ba? Ano yung specify? Wala. So, pag ganyan, you might look you will wonder, paano nalalaman ng free kung gaano kalaking chunk of memory yung i-de-allocate niya, di ba? So, for sure, meron yung metadata na minimaintain para malaman niya kung uh, ano yung gaano kalaki yung i-de-allocate niya, i-de-allocate niya, or if it's free niya. Okay? So, if a user requests memory is bigger than the free chunk size, the list will not find such in a free chunk. Coalis leasing a merge uh, returning a free chunk with existing chunks into a large single free chunk if address of them are nearby. So, kung magkakatabi naman siya, pwede mo silang i uh, pagsamasamain. So halimbawa, itong tatlong to, 0, 10, 20, okay? instead of having three entries in the free list list, okay, you can merge them, coalesce them, and you get one large chunk so that when a request comes in that will require uh, a large amount of memory it can be satisfied because you have one big chunk of memory available you get the idea and you simply split this later if uh, the size being requested is smaller than this one so at this point any request for 30 bytes can be satisfied given the scenario. Unlike before, there is no way to satisfy a request with 430 bytes. Okay? The idea? Okay. So, the question is, uh, the question I was mentioning a while ago is, how does the uh, free function, okay, 
determine the amount of memory to be allocated. Okay? Kasi sa malok kailangan mo ng size, di ba? Malok size of kung ano yung data structure na yun o yung type. Okay? So, how does the free function do that? Okay? So, actually, merong tinatawag na header yung uh, ina-allocate na memory ng malok. Okay? So, it's called a header block. Okay? Kung ito yung, ito yung malok call mo, yung PTR, nire-return niya yan. Dyan. Ito yung nire-return niya. Okay? Tapos, merong slot dyan na ginagamit na header to determine, to store kung gaano kalaki yung chunk na na-allocate niya. So, essentially, kung, kung curious kayo yan, you can write a program that allocates, that calls malloc consecutively. Pag tinignan nyo yung addresses na to, pag print nyo yung value ng addresses na yan, makikita nyo na parang may butal. Hindi sila magkasunod na parang fix yung value. May butal yan because of the implementation of this header. Okay. If you ever, kung na-curious lang kayo. Okay. And marami actually implementation. Maraming techniques to implement malloc. Merong dog list malloc. Iba yung implementation ng uh, malloc ng Linux. Okay. So we have a lot of choices okay, for implementing. But this is one way to be able to store kung mga pinaka-basic na way para ma-store yung information ng ngayon. Okay? Time na ba? Hindi pa. So, ayan. So, at the sim the minimum is basically the size. Okay? So, dun hahanapin ngayon ng free. Okay? So, malalaman naman ng free yun kasi kung halimbawa, di ba, ang parameter mo sa free ay void po void pointer lang okay so void pointer pag alam mo yung header size isubtract mo lang siya doon sa address nung nito makukuha mo na yung header pointer and you can now access the field para malaman mo yung size you get the idea so this is the structure for example for the header and yung magic number it's some kind of a hash or some kind of a frame a checksum to determine the integrity of that particular uh, chunk of memory. Okay? So, integrity check, usually these are check sums. Okay? Sum of the bytes in the memory area. Okay? Uh, the size for free region is the size of the header plus the size of the space uh, allocated to the issue. So, I'd like to emphasize this. Na pag nagmalok ka, okay, pag nagmalok na si malok 20, hindi lang 20 yung ina-allocate ng free space manager. 20 plus yung size ng header. Okay? In this case, uh, 8 bytes. Kung int, int, int ba yun? So, int, 4 bytes, 4 bytes. So, yung size ng header basically is 8 bytes. Okay? Uh, okay. If a user requests n bytes, the library searches for a free chunk of size n plus the size of the header. So, nagmalo ka yung kanina, yung implementation natin. Okay, nag, nagmalo ka 20 plus yung size ng header. Yun ang hahanapin niya dun sa free list space. So, kung halimbawa, nag-request ka ng ano, ng, ang length nito ay 10. Tapos, kung halimbawa, yung length ng header mo ay 4. Ang pwede mong, anong parameter ng malok ang pwede mong ilagay lang na mahasatisfy nito ang chunk na to? 6, di ba? 6 plus 4, 10. So, ito yung chunk na yan. You get the idea? Okay. So, that's uh, okay. the idea of uh, free space allocation. Okay. So, simple point, simple point, eh, sabi mo kanina, paano malalaman nung, ano, yung location ng header? Okay. Ito lang. So, yung pointer, Ito yung na-return ng malok, isubtract mo yung size ng header, you now have access to the header pointer data structure and you can now use HPTR arrow size para makuha mo yung size niya. Ayan. You get the magic number. You get the idea? So, yan. Now, we'll stop. Uh, so, 
Ang tanong ngayon is, saan ba inilalagay yung free list na yun? So actually, it's embedded dun sa memory. Kung baga, di ba meron tayong free list? Yung tanong na yun, itong free list na to, saan ito nilalagay? Is this a separate data structure located somewhere? Or nasa heap din mismo to? Okay. Uh, the good thing is that, you will learn later, that yung free list na yan, nasa heap mismo yan. Okay. So, that's a very interesting or uh, idea na yung list na yun, nandun mismo sa, ano, sa heap. Okay. So, we'll continue this uh, uh, next meeting. Okay? So, please pass your... Uh